Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the witnesses being here today. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. A controlled border is a compassionate border. Uh, we had Sheriff Daniels actually testify here in this committee, and he said in four decades, Mr. Wolf, that he had never seen the border as secure as it was in 2018 and never as broken as it is now. So tell me in just a few months, 24, 25 months, what changed dramatically, and what do you think the, the reason we're having such an influx of encounters and, and others cross the border? Well, I think the easy answer, Congressman, is everything. Everything changed. And it started really from day one of this administration where they had a very successful border security regime in place uh, that we had perfected over four years. We didn't get everything right the first time, uh, but over four years, we put a regime in place that held individuals accountable for illegally breaking the law, that got those who needed those asylum protections under U.S. law, we got them those protections quicker than they have ever gotten before. Uh, this administration, for a variety of different reasons, said, nope, we don't like it. So what did they do? They stopped border wall construction, which I should just mention, when you talk about operational control, that's actually in the Secure Fence Act. So Congress, back in 2006, thought that you would gain operational control by putting physical infrastructure along the border, but nevertheless. Uh, you would also, uh, they uh, tore down MPP, or the Remain in Mexico program, our asylum cooperative agreements, and the list goes on and on and on. And so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what happens when you tear down those programs. And you had the former chief of the Border Patrol telling the administration at the time, this is what's going to happen when you tear down these programs and you don't put other deterrent immigration border security programs in place. So the this is what's going them, to happen. They gave them a heads up. They said, this is what's going to happen if you, if you undo the policies in place. I think numerous individuals did, yes. You know, I say if you've got a water leak, you don't turn the pressure on to the House. And it seems like in a lot of ways we had some problems with immigration and we have turned a tremendous amount of pressure on our border agents. And really now they're concierge. They're not really agents. I mean, they're, they're there, but they're just processing people through and they can't keep up. Um, Mr. Bradbury, I've heard that people south of the border are paying the cartel from, you know, four to five, 6,000 just south of the border. Our Syrians were 20,000. Russians were paying 19,000. And I think Chinese nationals were paying $80,000. But the, the administration, in my opinion, has basically created twofold for people coming across the border. That's why I say it's compassionate to have it controlled because you're either a drug mule, you're trafficking heroin, cocaine, or fentanyl, you're wearing carpet shoes. That's how you pay your passage into this country, or you become an indentured servant and you make installment payments. Have you heard that as well? Yes, from uh, some of the experts on immigration at, uh, uh, in the Heritage Center for uh, Border Security. And um, what I understand is the cartels really effectively control our border at this point. Certainly everything up, up to the border. So the operational control is actually, of the cartel has operational more control, it's that, not us. Yes, yes, more likely that than our government. And, and they are making as much or more money off human trafficking now than the drug tra trafficking. That's my understanding. And so, Mr. Adler, I got one question for you as well, sir. Um, considering this administration, do you think they're using the prosecutorial discretion correctly? I, I do not. Um, you know, my colleague up here talked about how uh, Justice Scalia, in, in uh, an opinion, talked about prosecutorial discretion and how that is something that is useful and that every prosecutor and every police agency has. That is true. However, it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. We're back to talking about case-by-case -case basis. A prosecutorial discretion done as a categorical prosecutorial discretion is not actual discretion. That's categorically saying we're not going to go after a group of people. That's not a case-by-case -case determination. When Justice Scalia was talking about it, he was talking about at any, at any stage in the process for an individual, not for a group of people. Mr. Melody, do you, do your, does your organization plan on suing the Biden administration? Oh, we have sued the Biden administration, as we've sued every administration going back 30 years. Thank you, thank you. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.